Over the coming days, weeks, and months, and probably even years, you're going to start hearing more and more about carbon. What it is, how to use it, how it's going to help your server's performance, and why you need to consider switching. Today I'm going to be giving you a real high-level overview of what carbon is all about, how to install it, some of the things you need to watch out for, and then I'm going to dive in and show you how it works and why I think this is going to be the next greatest thing for Rust modding. But before we get into all of that, has anybody checked out the Prototype 17? This pistol is badass. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plug interviews and tutorials, plus I wanna give you all of the tips and tools that are gonna make your Rust server ownership so much easier. If you're brand new to my channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on and to get the latest updates on the Rust development world. I'll remind you a couple of times throughout the video to hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're watching so please remember to do so all right let's get on to today's video so obviously the first and probably the most important question is what is carbon well, i'm just going to read directly off of the documentation page the exact same documentation page that i'm going to link you to in a couple of minutes because i can't do a better introduction of what carbon is all about than the developers themselves have already done so carbon is a self-updating lightweight intelligent mod loader for rust utilizing the latest c sharp and harmony for best performance and stability possible its robust framework and backwards compatibility with all rust plugins make it the ultimate replacement for the those wanting better functionality and performance from their plugins. So that's essentially what Carbon is. It's actually a replacement for Oxide that seamlessly integrates with all of your existing plugins, configurations, language files, data sets, everything. Everything will seamlessly integrate over to Carbon if you decide that you want to replace Oxide. Now, why would you want to replace Oxide with Carbon? And I actually struggled with this quite a bit because I didn't know which angle I wanted to take on this video. I'm not trying to bash Oxide at all. Oxide has been a great modding platform. I've been happy to use it for many, many years now. I've taught thousands of people how to use Oxide. I'm very comfortable with it. However, it does have its downsides, but to give credit where credit is due, for the last 18 or so months, it's been really good. There was a time way back in the day where we were waiting a really long time after a server update came out before an actual Oxide update came out, which totally borked our servers, and it was incredibly frustrating as a server owner waiting for Oxide to get your server back online. But like I said, that hasn't been an issue for a very long time. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't start looking for a different solution, a lighter weight solution perhaps, an automatically updating solution. There's a ton of different reasons why we might be looking for an alternative, and I'm happy to show you today why I think Carbon is going to be that solution. So without getting too technical, because honestly the technical side of things is even outside of my realm, I don't exactly understand how Oxide or Carbon actually works. When I hear developers talking about things like libraries and hooks and all of these other things, I don't even necessarily know what they're talking about because I'm not a developer at all. So I spent a couple of hours on a call with Death so that he could dumb it down for me so that I could explain it to everybody in a way that I understood. So I may get some of the technical jargon wrong, but I am just trying to explain it in the best way that I know how. So first of all, Oxide was built to actually modify a couple of different games. I'm not sure if everyone actually knows that. So obviously we have Rust, Heart World, Seven Days to Die, Reign of Kings, and The Forest, and I thought there was Valheim on there at one point in time. So that right there brings up an important difference. Carbon is designed strictly for Rust. It was designed by Rust server owners, by Rust server players, and it will probably only ever be for Rust. Obviously, I can't guarantee that, but for the foreseeable future, Rust is the only thing that Carbon cares about. Carbon also has a full-time staff, so there's always somebody going to be available to take care of issues, make sure that it's up to date, fix whatever problems we might come across. In its very early stages, we can already see where the developers are actually going to be going with Carbon in the future. I've already made some suggestions to death about it. I have no idea if those suggestions are going to get picked up or not, but we already have a built-in permissions manager system. We already have built-in gather manager. We already have a built-in stack size manager, and they already have an integrated Rust edit extension. So that right there brought in my first suggestion was why don't we have a built-in Discord extension as well? But instead of us sitting here talking about it, let's actually dive into it. I'm going to show you how to install on an existing server that already has Oxide installed on it. And then we'll go in game real quick and I'll show you what it's all about. So what we're starting with here, as you can see, I already have a Rust server up and running. I threw this server together just so that I could record this video. It's basically just a copy pasta of one of my other servers. Doesn't really matter to you. But what I do want to show you right off the bat is these are my plugins. So I can go in here and I can show you, this is my list of plugins. And if I go in the server and if I type plugins, it actually prints out what plugins are actually running on this server. I just wanted you to see that there's actually plugins on here and it is running on the Oxide modding platform. So O dot version, Oxide Rust version 2.0.5758. So that's our starting off point. 
So what we need to do from this point is we need to download and install the carbon files similar to what we've done in the past with the oxide files. But one important thing that I want you to do before we get into any of that is actually go in and remove any of the oxide DLLs inside your Rust dedicated data slash managed folder. I'm gonna show you, don't worry. So for right now, I'm just gonna shut down this server. And I know this text is really small on the screen there, but you should all be fairly familiar with what this looks like. So let's go into your Rust dedicated data folder and then let's go into the managed folder. And what I want you to do is actually go up to your search bar in the top right hand corner and I want you to type oxide with a period and then an asterisk. That should bring up seven files that we need to actually remove before we start installing carbon. So we're just gonna do control A to select all of those files and then just delete them. We don't need them anymore anyways. Once that's done, we can go back to the folder where all of our rust files are now that we have those oxide files removed let's actually run the updater so that we're completely putting this server back to vanilla so in my case i can just run my updater file you probably have your own different way of updating your server but this is the same action that you'd be taking on a server wipe day or a server update day Next, we need to download the actual Carbon files. So click on the link in the video description down below. It's going to take you to the CodeFling website directly to the Carbon documentation page. Here you're going to see that intro, that description that I just read out to you. That was where I got that information from. It's going to go over a couple of the features of Carbon. And then down at the bottom of the page, we have an installation readme as well as a configuration readme. So we're going to go to the installation readme and that's going to take us to a page that looks just like this. So we've got three options here. We can download this for Windows, Linux, or OS X. For those of you that are running running Linux, I'm supposed to tell you that there is actually a pterodactyl egg. Yes, I did just say pterodactyl egg. And I'm going to assume that anyone that's using the pterodactyl dashboard is going to know what that means. But for right now, we're actually going to be installing this on Windows. So click on the Windows tab and then go to the releases page right here. Once you're on the releases page, scroll down till you get to the carbon production build. And we want to grab this file right here, carbon.windows.release.zip. And this is obviously a zipped file, so let's unzip that right quick. We're just going to go to its own folder right here. We're going to go in that folder. We're going to copy everything within that folder, bring it over to our server folder right over here, and just pass that in there. Once all of your files have been moved over, restart your server. As soon as you boot your server, you're going to see this big carbon thing at the very top there. If at any point in time carbon sees any files that it doesn't want to see, so any remnant oxide files or anything like that, it's going to give you a warning right there instead saying, hey, we couldn't actually perform this process. You'll have to go in and actually remove those files and run this process again. So while we're waiting for the server to actually finish booting up, let's go in and have a look at the carbon folder right here. And an important file that you'll probably recognize from your oxide days is this config.json. This kind of looks similar to the Oxide configuration file, but there is an important feature that I wanted to make you aware of. So you've probably heard me talk in the past about plugin watchers. What plugin watchers does is it, it makes it so that Oxide is always watching for any changes that you make in your Oxide folders. So with plugin watchers turned on, anytime you uploaded a new plugin to your server, it would automatically compile and allow you access to that plugin. Now script watchers works in the exact same way. So this is essentially plugin watchers. And I've always suggested to a lot of users to make sure you have plugin watchers turned off. There was a weird thing that happened sometimes in rare cases where if you had plugin watchers turned on and you put in a new plugin, it would sometimes lock up your server. So by turning plugin watchers off, that problem went away. I'm being told, however, that we don't have to do that with Carbon. We should be able to leave script watchers turned on and not have to worry about the server freezing. If you do find that your server is freezing when you're installing new plugins, then obviously go in and turn off script watchers. Back at the carbon folder, you're going to see that there's a bunch more folders that you're probably not used to seeing. However, the basics that you are used to seeing are still there. Config, data, language folder, and then the plugins folder itself. So what I'm going to do when the server is actually finished booting is I'm actually going to go into my Oxide folder and I'm going to copy all of these files minus the Oxide.config file and just pass that over into my carbon folder. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. All right, so now that the server has finished booting, let's do an o.version to make sure that Oxide is actually gone and command o.version is not found. So now if we do c.version, it should give us the information for carbon. There we go. Carbon is installed and functioning. So going back to what I was talking about with our plugins, let's go into our Oxide folder. Let's grab all of these folders right here. We're just going to copy that. You could do copy cut if you wanted to, and then go back over to our carbon folder and let's just pause that in place. And once that's all done, we can do c.plugins and it'll actually show us a list of all of the working plugins on our server. So as you can see there, everything compiled just like we would expect it to. And because I brought in my configuration files as well as my data files, Files, all of that information just transferred right over directly. I didn't have to do any extra work and all of those plugins will 
just work now. As you can see there, I didn't know what the command was. I thought it was still going to be just plugins. However, it's not. It's c.plugins. And if you needed to reload a plugin or say you wanted to unload a plugin, now the command is c.reload or c.unload. And then whatever the plugin name is after that. All right, so that's Carbon installed. That's all of our plugins transferred over into the Carbon folder. Everything's now up and running. Let's go in game and check it all out. All right, so first things first, let's just make sure that we actually have access to the plugins that we think we should. And so for right now, let's just do slash perms and see that that just works just like that. Let's check vanish and vanish is working. You can see in the bottom left hand corner there, you can't see my ghost because it's behind the graphic, but it is there and I can hit my hotkey again and turn off vanish. So the plugins are definitely working without question. Now to show you the crown jewel of carbon, the command for that is slash C admin no space. And that brings you up this big, beautiful piece of work right here. This is the carbon GUI. This is what allows us access to everything that is carbon related. Anything that you see in white text, you can actually dynamically update. So for example, the host name or the server name, we can actually dynamically update that right on the fly. So I can add the 2023 right there, click off of that, go back over to my console view, and you can actually see in the bottom left hand corner there, it dynamically updated the name of my server to add the 2023 at the end. So uh, right here, I'm just going to change it back off of the other screen there. Click off and you should see it change back right now. Just like that. Boom, it changed. So you can dynamically change the name of your server right from this panel. We've got our carbon version. We've got the informational update. We can see how many hooks are actually installed in relation to how many plugins we actually have installed. So the plugins that have hooks that are required, it will only install those hooks that are required instead of the entire library of hooks. We're only utilizing, in this case, 104 out of a possible 640. 41. How many plugins are installed? We've got 21 currently running on this server right now. Is it modded? Do we have auto update turned on? And these radio buttons on the right hand side there, this is the first time that I've actually seen them working. I was previously using a beta version where none of these actually worked, but as you can see, they are working now. And by the time you all see this video, it's important to note that Carbon will have been released for three days. March 1st is actually the release date for Carbon for public use, but because it didn't line up with my release schedule, I'm actually three days late on this. If we scroll over one tab, we can go into the permissions management section and we can deal with players individually or we can deal with groups individually, whatever you want. So we can go into the admin section here and we can control these permissions just like we would in any other permissions manager, but we're doing it all directly with Carbon. What does that mean for you and server performance? That's one extra plugin that you don't have to have on your server because it's already built into Carbon. If you want to be adding groups, you can do that too. The one thing that I wish we did have is the ability to remove groups or clone groups. That would be really handy. And if we scroll over one more tab here, we can go into the player section. So we can call this like a player administration section. However, there's no actual actions that you can take on the player. So let's just click on myself. You can see my name, my Steam64 ID. You can see where I am on the map. And if we click on view permissions, it's going to take you back to the permissions page and show you all of the permissions that my player character actually has access to. So the one thing that I'm hoping to see in the very near future is the actual player administration abilities built right into this GUI. So we could ditch player administration altogether and we could freeze, hurt, heal, feed, water, whatever we wanted to do. All of those things that we would normally do inside of player administration, I'd like to see that ability on this GUI as well. I don't know if that's coming or not, but it's another one of those suggestions that I did make. It feels like I've only just like barely scratched the surface on what Carbon is going to be able to do for us. There's there's so many things that I had to skip over on this video because it's already way too long. I'd be surprised if anybody is still watching at this point of the video. I hope you are. And if you are, thank you so much for sticking with me through this video because this is going to be very important stuff. I truly believe that this is going to replace any of the previous modding platforms that we've ever had before. Yeah, I know that's only one, but whatever. Well, actually, that's not true because Harmony is technically a modding platform, too. So I want to know what you all think of Carbon so far. Like I said, I know that this is just a high level overview. I know there's going to be a ton of questions and that's OK. I'm ready for them. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you have problems, if you have suggestions that you'd like the developers to see, leave that all in the comments down below. There's so many important things that I want you to all make a note of. There's almost too many to list. Like Carbon is free. It's going to stay free. It's going to stay free forever. They have full time staff ready to fix any issues that we come up with. Because seriously, once this gets widespread out into the community, we're going to break it. I know that we are. Rust server developers, we have the ability of breaking things. So as you're scrolling down right now to let me know what you think of Carbon in the comment section, make sure you smash that like button on the way by. Check out this video on the left hand side of your screen right now. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.
By the way, you know how like all YouTubers have a certain way of signing off on their videos? See you all on the next one seems to be what most people use. I've intentionally never used that on any of my videos up until recently, and I don't know why, but I can't seem to get away from it. But it kind of makes me want to punch myself in the face.